Welcome to the Urban Explorer's Backpack, Volume 1. Now this is a collection of some of our adventures over the last eight years. You'll get to see some of our new explorations as well as some of our early ones. We're standing in front of the old Staten Island Hospital. We explored this place back in 2003, before paranormal investigation was a household term. Now back then, we were still calling ourselves scared on Staten Island. And that night, we really were scared on Staten Island. Sometimes during urban exploration, hunting the paranormal can become the least of your concerns. Especially in places like this, where anything can happen at any time. But let's see what did happen that night. And remember, all the events are real, all the danger is real, and all the fear is real. This is a picture of the uh, middle building between the castle and the uh, eight-story structure. Uh, this place is shot, man. Obviously, the ceiling has collapsed in this area, making entrance to this building almost impossible. Uh, there's a fine line between crazy and stupid, which uh, I'm just not going to cross right now. Uh, looking around into the first floor on the small building, you can see that there is uh, actually nothing much left in this place but, but destruction. Um, the floors have, uh, have given way in many, many areas, um, very dangerous, and as I stated before, I'm definitely not going to go in there. As a kid growing up in the 80s, I lived right across the street, and I was able to see the old Staten Island Hospital from my kitchen window. Now, even back then, there were stories about the place, and I always wondered if there was any truth to those rumors. On a cold, windy night in March of 2003, I got my chance. We are set up here at the top floor penthouse here in the uh, condos. We made this our base camp. This is where everything's going to get stored. This is where we're going to pretty much launch our operation from. We've got flashlights. We've got our walkie-talkies. We're just about ready. At the beginning of the night, we all stayed in the same building. Brian and Greg were assigned the top floors while I was going to explore the bottom. We'd meet somewhere in the middle. I was surprised at the amount of stuff left behind. It was as if the residents just up and vanished in the middle of the night. In the early 90s, people started moving into the apartments before the reconstruction was complete. Unfortunately, a lack of funding caused the project to fall through. However, this didn't stop homeless people from squatting there over its many years of abandonment. We found discarded furniture, clothing, and other evidence that indicated people had recently been living here. In fact, it looked as if some people may still be living here. Now in places like this, where there are squatters possibly taking up residence, you have to be extremely careful. You have to treat the situation as if you are trespassing in someone else's home. Don't expect to be welcomed by them. It's a good bet they won't be happy to see you. They could be crazy. They could be dangerous. 
they could be threatened by your very presence and act on it. At the very least, what you could probably expect is for them to try and scare you away from their home. What do you feel on this floor, dude? Do you feel like it's just us on here? I heard that. I was always hearing something behind me. Always. It just made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I was constantly looking over my shoulder. Yes, I do. Honestly, I was hoping we wouldn't find any paranormal activity. The place was scary enough without throwing ghosts into the mix. Take three guys and put them in an abandoned building, and your fear level's about here. Each one you take away, the fear level goes up and up. Looks like someone might have came in and ripped out the, uh, the copper piping and used the salad or something. Hey, who's that handsome guy? Oh shit! Fuck! God damn it, man! I scared the fucking shit out of myself. <laughs> that sucks. All right, great. So now I look like an idiot, which if I didn't before, now I do. So I'll be, uh, I'll be completely honest with you guys. Uh, this was. In my first opinion, probably the least scary place that we have been to. Um, but I had a nice little scare myself before. So, uh, so much for me looking all brave and stuff. Alright. From time to time, in places, you do hear noises because it could be your own footfalls, your imagination messes around with you. You know, um, but sometimes, sometimes maybe there's really things messing with you and you just don't know it. Fuck. There's still blinds on this window. And there's a slight breeze coming in here, which was uh, making a noise that freaked the hell out of me for a second. Um, I think that there's the wind. Yeah. It's just creepy in here, man. You know? Now back then, we didn't have K2 meters or spirit boxes. But what we did always have was cameras rolling recording audio and video in hopes of catching some form of evidence. Now, while not the most technologically advanced investigating compared to today's standards, we were able to catch some EVPs, like this one.
The building was creepy and disgusting, but at least it was structurally sound, especially compared to some of the other places we've been to. Well, one less thing to worry about. As you can see, the windows here are boarded up. All over here. I'm not sure if it's to keep out people, to keep out weather, to keep it from being destroyed any further, but as you can see, over here, the walls have been destroyed. In these places, there's really no need for destruction, but it just is. That's what happens, so... What's that? I don't know if this was intentional or by accident. Oh my goodness. You see what I see? I see a pigeon hung. Looks like his heart cut out. And look. In addition to that, it's another bird inside a... And that's a bird in there. Oh, poor guy. All throughout the night, we kept finding dead birds in the building. While this may not be odd in itself, the strange thing is that they were all missing their heads. I think a wild animal would have fed on the birds, and we would have just found skeletons. Considering that, this could have been the work of a person. That's a pretty disturbing thought. Staten Island Hospital still uh, open for business. Just a different kind now. On a previous scout, the others found a junkie getting high in the building that I was supposed to do my solo mission in. I think he was more scared than we were. He just sat there staring at us like a deer in headlights. And needless to say, we opted to steer clear of that particular building during the investigation. This time, safety won over bravery. It's a double time to get upstairs. Alright. Actually, you go first. See, I see other people right there, which is uh, my group. But, uh, they actually didn't scare me. We just came to look for you. Oh, why? Was it taking too long? Uh, well, it's past, it's past, past the rendezvous point and you weren't checking in. Oh, I didn't hear them. My radio, uh, I didn't hear anything. Walkie-talkies are an invaluable piece of equipment on an urban exploration. You can use them to find out if the strange noise you just heard was one of your teammates in another section or something else nearby. Also, you need them to stay in touch with your group should you get lost or another emergency arises. After our investigation of the main building, I went across to check out the castle. Yeah, it's dangerous to be alone in places like this, but we're good like that. After finding that crackhead, there was no way I was going off alone. Let Chris make new friends, not me. Greg and I were able to see Chris from the penthouse windows almost the entire time. Anytime he went out of view, we were still able to get him on walkie-talkie. Okay, I have to be careful. There's a stair mason right here. So... Definitely don't want to fall through that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this floor is buckling in a lot of places. Whoa. See right there is another hole. I'm I'm gonna back up very slowly. Because there's another hole. And uh yeah, it's not cool man. Definitely not cool. Alright, and the wind here is freaking me out. Definitely not safe to be in here. Part of the floor caved in over here. The, uh, the elements have definitely taken their toll on this place. You do have to be careful because there are other spots in the floors that I can go through. 
and I really don't feel like doing that today. Now there's some people out there probably saying, well this isn't scary. Well you know what, it's easy not to be afraid sitting in your living room. But when you're walking around in the dark alone, look the dangers are real. And I think otherwise, it's just naive. It's a little spooky. The guys just told me they saw a light down below. I'm gonna go check it out. I don't know, it's just the flickering is going around too. I'm gonna be careful. Okay, are you on the second floor? I thought I told you to turn your light off. My light's off now. Why are we seeing it then? I have no idea. Dude, now there's lights on the first and second floor. You Fucking get out of there. Guys, come give me a hand here real quick. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Fortunately, that time it turned out to be nothing, but it could have easily gone the other way. As an epilogue, in 2004, less than a year later, dozens of squatters were forcibly removed from the premises by local law enforcement. Now, as you can see, Staten Island Hospital is in the middle of a residential neighborhood, unlike Kings Park, which is a massive complex unto itself. So if we got into trouble, or God forbid someone got hurt, help was far away. We're finally in Kings Park. This is Building 21. We are on the third floor. This is the female residence area. And from the looks of this entire floor, other than a little bit of damage to the elements, not too many people have been in this area. This mirror is intact. Most of the paintings that are were on the wall are still on the wall. And you can tell we're one of a handful of people that have been here since it closed. So in 10 years, that's not bad. Here's more proof that we're one of the few people to have been in here since closing. Curtains. They're not damaged. They're not wet. They're not soiled. They're not burned. I mean, look at the paint around this room. It's totally in, in, in rotten decay, but everything else in the room seems to be intact. It's rare to find a place that hasn't been destroyed by people. This is a fourth floor kitchen, building 21. Two dining rooms. Pretty much on either side. My assumption, anyway. Now, it really is important to keep your wits about you because urban exploration has no game plan. You just go where the hallways take you. And sometimes, dead ends or destroyed rooms force you to turn back, but that's just the name of the game. was a challenge because it wasn't just one building. There were over 50 buildings for us to explore and just getting between them turned out to be a challenge in itself. After the initial scouting, we made our way to the rooftop to get a better look around. All right, off to the side here. 
is the mass of Building 7, which we know has a morgue located in it, somewhere in the lower levels. Although, as big as it is, it pales in comparison to Building 93, which you can see off in the distance, right. just over the treetops. Ah, uh, Building 93. We could see the building, but it seemed like the only way to get to it was via the tunnel systems. So began our two hour trek in the dark. Eventually, we did find the morgue, so at least we got one thing accomplished. Found the morgue. It's in building seven. Where we're gonna wind up someday, son. It wasn't a long stay, but we had a mission to accomplish. So it was back to the tunnels for us. Given how much time we spent down there with the mold and the asbestos, I'm really glad I had my mask on. Condensation. Oh, no. You get fucking dripped on, man. That's what happens when you're in a tunnel, you get dripped on. This place is fucking psycho bullshit. <laughs> Over the years, I've observed an interesting phenomenon when it comes to urban exploration. We curse a lot. It's fucking pitch black down here, bro. Oh, You sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. I can't understand what he's saying. Prick the bastard. Bugs. It's the hatch from Lost. We're in building seven, right here. Uh huh. Where my thumb is. Okay. Building 93 is another big fucker up here. So you think it's at least 93? Is that possible? I would love to find out. Maybe later after uh, we search around. All right. All right. You know what we need on these missions? What? Fluorescent markers. Mm. I felt we came as prepared as we could have been for this one. We had a map. We were able to visually see where we were going above ground. 
but somehow we still got turned around in those tunnels. Two hours in the tunnels looking for the way to Building 93. Two hours of forks, of branches, of dead ends. Does it? That... Dude, it still keeps going. We just uh, came out of a tunnel system under what we were hoping was Building 93. It is not. There's some other tunnels that branch off into directions that we have no idea where they lead. So this door leads out. It's padlocked. We can't get through it. So in an effort to find out where we are, I've got to climb out to that window over there and hope it, it'll lead me out. Day turned into night as we searched, but we never found a way in. It really kills me to say that Kings Park beat us. Perhaps someday we'll return. Kings Park won. Scared crew, zero. Spending as much time underground as we did in Kings Park, we found it to be both claustrophobic and disorienting. A vast contrast to this was our time at the Freetown State Forest. Now, buildings in disrepair aren't the only dangers that you can encounter during urban exploration. Sometimes, the outdoor terrain can prove to be its own treacherous obstacle, as you're about to see. All right, uh, Brooke and I have split off from uh, the rest of our crew. We're now with Spring and Monica from Green Mountain Paranormal. And we're gonna go investigate a site called the Ledge. Okay. How far of a hike is it, Spring? Um, a half a mile up to the left. Half a mile. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, you ladies ready to do this? Yay! Yeah, let's go. Right now we're at the Sonnet Ledge in Freetown State Forest, which is in Freetown, Massachusetts. We came out here tonight um, to investigate some legends of um, spook lights in the woods. Apparently people like to commit suicide at this location, whether by choice or pushed off by some other being or reason is debatable. Uh, apparently perfectly normal, not depressed people have been known to jump off with friends in full, full view. People come here and they feel oppressive feelings and it makes them want to jump off the cliff. 
you? I'm guessing it's a 100 foot drop off the ledge. There's legends of puckwudgies in the woods. They're like a mischiev mischievous uh, creature, about two feet tall, hairy, and they're kind of like the fairies of Ireland. They're just mischievous, and if you don't appease them, they'll do stuff like kick you off the ledge. <laughs> um, it's very dangerous to be up here. Uh, especially at night, I wouldn't recommend coming up here at night. I'm more afraid of the locals than I am of any legend, just because you never know what they have in mind. Okay, so I'm up here at the ledge with uh, Chris, uh, Monica, and Spring, and I brought some equipment with me to see if we can get any readings. If you can talk to the device that's in my hand, we can communicate with you. There's a red light. Please speak clearly. Tell us your name. Did you jump off the ledge? Was it an accident? Were you pushed? How old are you? Can you tell us what town you lived in? Looking out into the darkness was intimidating, knowing that if you're not careful, you could slip and fall over the edge, then you're dead. This is me on the ledge and everyone filming me on the ledge. I've decided I can't take it anymore and I'm gonna get off this ledge. I'm gonna jump. How's your mental state, Brian? Feeling it? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm very aware of gravity right now. Very aware of gravity, very aware of my mortality and uh, a little freaked out that there's so many cameras that might witness my demise. At least I'll be I'll be infamous. Yeah, that's right. As the latest asshole to plunge to his doom. Just be sure that when you are falling, you got the camera trained back on us. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah, good. The more I'm out here, the more I'm getting freaked out. Yeah, Brian, come back up. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, I was very aware of, uh, very acutely aware of gravity and its pull on, on my, you know, feeble little body. Um, I was aware of all the bugs that were, you know, trying to, to feed on me as I'm swatting them away. And every time I turned up, my balance was thrown off. And uh, it's a little freaky. So I, I can imagine at night people coming up here and partying. And, you know, I mean, you see a lot of evidence around. Um, I could definitely tell that a lot of people have met their untimely demise uh, out of foolishness. It's a Sasquatch. <laughs> and here we demonstrate the nimbleness, the dexterity of Christopher Stowe Mancuso. Watch how he skips along those rocks along the treacherous waterline. He's got the grace of a flying squirrel as he flits from boulder to boulder. I, uh, I climbed all the way up from the bottom and now I'm a little stuck. Um, the ground is very uh, slippery beneath me, um, chunks of dirt given away, and there's not a lot of solid footholds or anything to hold on to, so, um, yeah. Alright, let's do it anyway. I'm gonna film it. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna fucking film it. Whoa, shit! That just fell. I went to grab that, and it fell. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to that. Shit. 
It's shit. What happened, dude? All right, I got stuck on my way up there. I grabbed onto this, like a little tree, and I went to pull myself up, and the tree just friggin' broke. Oh, no. I fell down a hill. Well, it's and, a good uh, thing we were around to not save you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I made it, man. Hardcore, buddy. And as always, I'm more, more worried about the camera than about myself. <laughs> but I got that up here, too. Once again, I narrowly avoided a trip to the hospital. Now, I can laugh at it now, but at the time it was happening, I didn't find it funny at all. In fact, over the last eight years, I've had to injure myself at least a dozen times. But luckily, it was never serious enough to require medical attention. That's why you gotta bring with you a first aid kit every time, as well as go with someone who has your back, like we did with our friends at the Northeastern Paranormal Investigators, as we explored the Henryton State Hospital. My name is Dana Wingard. I am the founder of Northeastern Paranormal Investigations. My wife and I founded the group about five years ago. My inspiration was my, my wife. She uh, has had paranormal activity happen to her ever since she was a little kid. I wouldn't say that I'm a medium or anything like that, but I can definitely tell when there's something around. Uh, we, um, I've been sensing ghosts since I was two. Occasionally I've seen them. I always thought she was, you know, a little crazy, but uh, until I, I, I went and visited a place that made me more of a believer than a skeptic. We invited the scared team down to go to the Henryton because we have seen their show and we thought that this would be a great place for them. It's extremely dangerous. You could, I don't go there at night. Uh, you could wind up falling four floors and wind up hurting yourself really bad or even killing yourself. It's time for our latest adventure. We're gonna head down these train tracks to get to the Henryton State Hospital. And to get there, we're gonna have to go inside the Henryton Tunnel. Now the dangerous thing about this, dangerous and foolish, these train tracks are still in operation. So if we don't see you in the next segment, you'll know what happened to us. And this is the facility. Another abandoned institution? No problem. You know the drill. Split up and recon. Unlike Staten Island Hospital, the people we saw here, they weren't a threat. Places like this always attract curious kids, and there's easy access, unlike King's Park. It's broken. 
broad daylight, two o'clock in the afternoon. But in here, time pretty much ceases to exist. Although it's a lot cooler and damper down here, it's still very warm, it's still very humid. It's, it's very tomb-like with all the plaster peeling off the walls and the pipe sticking out and everything that's broken and busted and the shattered glass on the floor. Um, it's very dangerous. Survival supplies, it's a drinking water. Office of Civil Defense, Department of Defense, drinking water. They're empty. And yes, the water canisters are rusted through. Wow, this thing goes underneath the whole building. Oh, wow. It can. It goes all the way back. While it can be said that there are elements of danger in a paranormal investigation, during an urban exploration, the danger is much more evident and tangible. Right there on the side. Caution, contains asbestos. Nice. Especially since we just saw the bag that was clearly marked asbestos. It's probably in my best interest at this point to don my respirator. Who's your daddy? After seeing what these guys have been through, there was no way I was going to check this place out without a mask. Big bag of asbestos and me and my respirator. I was determined to find a way onto that roof. Now we're gonna have to find another way up. Through those, through that window, are stairs that go up one level. I gotta go across this roof. You can see it has holes in it. Don't try this at home, folks. Don't try this in Maryland either. I wouldn't try it, and I'm right here. I guess I lied when I said I wasn't going to try it. Just, just look at the floor. Look at the floor. Don't worry about the camera. Worry about you. Don't yeah, worry about I the got camera. it. Just take the camera so I can grab it. Don't lose glass. Okay. Cha-ching, baby. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice. Ooh, just made it. <laughs> the place has been trashed. Vandals have been in there. They have lit candles, let them burn all night, which have burned down parts of the building. The state has actually demolished part of it. There is asbestos everywhere. Um, the floors are rotting. There's debris all over the place. It's really not a safe place at all. I believe it was the administration building. Um, I think there are actually buffers offices in here. 
So maybe, you know, when you had the, um, when they needed medical, actual medical care. Just make sure that when you do an EVP and somebody makes a noise or you hear something from the outside, you just say right away, you know, that's that. Um, that way we don't taint our evidence. Right. Yeah, I'm doing one now. K2 is going off. There we go. We're getting some. We're in the left wing, top floor of the Henrington Hospital. We just had an EMF hit. It is approximately 3.10 p.m. I'm going to commence a uh, EMF. Uh, is there anybody here that would like to make contact with us? Can you state your name, please? Okay, we got people yelling in the back. I just got a spike. Right here. No reason why I should have. Can you do that again if that was you? You want it, Chris? What's that? Less than your EVP? Yeah, you can do that. Is there anyone here who was a patient of the hospital? Is there anyone here who was a patient of the hospital? See, and I just checked out the basement, the sub-basement, first floor, and Brian's up on the roof. <laughs> That's always been my role. I'm the guy who goes to the top of the building, who goes up the ladder, goes to the edge of a cliff. Now, I'm scared of heights, but it's challenging that fear that keeps me doing it. All right, as you can see, this is really dangerous up here because a lot of the roof has, uh, has caved in, so I gotta be really careful up here by myself. Now this is something that I want to address. There's a lot of people out there who say, oh, you should never go off on your own. But while I think that's a good rule in general, it's a rule that we tend not to follow. Look, it's just what we do. We're urban explorers. Going off on your own is the name of the game. But we can handle this. I mean, we've got our wits, we've got our experience, and we've got the right equipment. And if a situation arises that you can't handle alone, that's where the rest of your team comes in. Yeah! Hey, hey, how is it going? Why are you running? Huh? Why are you running? Oh, I said hello! Thought you were in trouble? No, I said, I said hello! Help. No. <laughs> 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 well, reaction time was pretty good. I was okay at the time, but of course, two minutes later, I trip on something and almost break my ankle again. It figures. Oh, did you get that on tape? No. Ow. Ow. What just happened? I fell. Again? Always. <sighs> See, I'm fine until people think I'm not. Then I get hurt. <laughs> that's right where I was. Did, did you, you didn't see me up there? We saw you. That's why we, uh, that's why we ran up here. So I was like, hey. Hello. You, dude, you know I never call for help anyway. <laughs> Where's that alcohol stuff? All right, this is what you get for coming to the Henryton. 
No, the casualty of urban exploration. Paybacks. <laughs> he was scratched by a demon. <laughs> oh my god, I was attacked! See, he really did need help when we came running. <laughs> then he fell after we helped him. We're psychic. <laughs> you guys are, oh my god, We're damn psychic. psychics that came before I was hurt. Alright, that concludes volume one of the Urban Explorer's backpack. As you can see, urban exploration is something you need to be prepared for. And we don't encourage people to go to these locations. You need to bring with you the right equipment, and you need to go with the right people. And even then, you're taking a risk. And most importantly, you need to bring with you common sense. Well, until next time, be safe, stay scared.